Okay, well, we're back for our second uh, Eon Alter Tricks Twitch stream. It's uh, less than a week. E3 is next week, so I'm working away at figuring out what the heck we're showing off for E3. We, we're not publicly on the floor, but um, on Wednesday night next week, we're going to be at the uh, Media Indie Exchange event, um, E3 Mix, I believe sponsored by IGN, so hopefully um, we'll do lots of cool videos and some awesome coverage coming out of that, and see if you can see what people think of it. And um, uh, so uh, today, Nerd Reactor's video Video Game Bomb, is that? Video Game Bomb podcast did their uh, top five indie games that they're most anticipating for me three, and we were number three. Number three. So, well, who, okay, Wes, who are the other ones after us? So we had. Oh, like, like number one and two. One and two. One and two. Okay, so number one was No Man's Sky, yeah. and number two was Mono Number Nine. Okay. Yeah, okay, those, are, those are pretty hard to compete with. So. <laughs> well, we're in very good company, considering we've, we, we haven't gotten too much press and buzz yet for this new iteration. Yeah, me too. Um, so today, we're going to play a little bit of the beginning of episode, uh, episode one, session two. So last time we were playing session one, so we were forgetting a little bit about half of that one. Uh, we we'll skip it ahead. So, what was going on last time? So, we were, so last time we, uh, we were playing the very beginning of the game. So we just arrived at the, uh, the uh, city of Tarnum, where our characters were about to start their epic journey into the caverns towards the Young Altar. And uh, we're kind of, I guess, halfway through, a little bit over halfway through that uh, that level. Um, we're gonna be moving on, kind of skipping ahead to the next yeah. the next level today. So we got all the way up to the, the fortress. We cleared out. So the part you missed, cleared out the Hall of Penitence. We got a glimpse of, of somebody who looked pretty evil. Yeah. Um, who, who did some shenanigans, and now we're gonna find out uh, the fallout from there. So we'll do a little bit of this, and then we'll just talk a bit about where we're at in production. Alright, so you're gonna play, you said you're gonna play Silent Thorn. Silent right? Thorn, she's our assassin. You know, last time we played Mirrored, I'm gonna play... So when you when you play a campaign, just stick with one all the way through. We're just jumping in a bit later, because we're developers and we're cheating. Cheats. I'm gonna play some... Shasek. To theory, Cell Sword. So Shasek's build is all about, well he's a, he's a glass can, he goes in, he does a lot of damage really quickly, he jumps out, he doesn't want to get mobbed, he needs he needs support to really stay well alive. But when when he gets into his blood rage mode, he does incredibly well. So all characters have this threshold, but when you get to a certain point. Thank you. Without your help, we couldn't retake the path of pilgrimage. I've lost so many good men trying. Did you find out who was behind the assault? It was the guild. They're under orders from a mysterious guild lord we haven't been able to identify. Whoever he is, he's powerful, and your men had no chance. The guild? They have a trade gate here in Tarn, and are in good standing with the order. Why ruin it all? It doesn't make sense. Whatever their reason, this is terrible news. The guild has very deep pockets. Their cell swords are trouble, but watch out for the blood guard. The guild buys their loyalty with blood, not gold. They're total fanatics. Tell me, assassin, is this guild lord your target? Please tell me it's why you're here. I need to learn his name to be sure, but it's definitely a possibility. Horrendous, could you open that gigantic door for us? We need to get through. That door is the legendary portal Obstinate, built in the days of Thaddeus Grey to withstand the full might of the Merodian Emperor's eyes. They didn't manage to finish building it before the Merodian host got here. You could level the entire fortress and that door would still stand. It simply cannot be opened from the outside. That's bad news. I don't care how big, how big it is, any door with, uh, can be picked with the right tools. Think about it, Grand Keeper. How do we get past that door? Even if I knew how to open the portal obstinate, my forces are spent, and the place is crawling with guild cell swords. I'm sorry. I really wish there was something I could do. I know it's a lot to ask, but if you find any keepers or priests around the fortress, please lend them a hand in the name of mercy. I'll do what I can, Grand Keeper, but I expect you to do your part to help us with the portal. I've already done a lot for you, Verandas. There better be a reward than this for me. Save my men and rid the fortress of the guild. 
And you'll have your gold, Tithiri. I promise. Thank you. I knew we could count on you. One more word of advice, then. My men spotted five Bloodguard commanders keeping the cell swords in line. Take them out, and those bandits will scamper like rats. Come see me again if you have other questions. Merch spirit guides you. So, if, uh, if Jay Preston is watching, so he said, uh, uh, he was on Twitter saying, hey, look, there's a stream. He's our voice actor for, uh, for so hello, Jay, for watching. And I'm watching the game, that's frame rate. Actually, we tested this a bit earlier in this time, so I wonder what's going on here. Doomed by Twitch. Yes. It's the, it's the, the super streaming. Yeah. Alright, so we're making our way up through the fortress, the main hall. Here we go. Oh, some people with their backs turned. So I'm okay. ranged. I can actually probably get in close enough to do some damage here. Yeah. So you you get their attention. You can range. Sorry guys about this frame rate, but uh, we thought we had this sort of something going on with our, our screen here. Keep working on it. We tested it earlier, it seemed fine. We will mail it next time. Bug on those guys, but I don't always approach and uh, attack. I don't know why. I'm not really sure why they don't put it themselves. Mm, that might have been a problem. No, I'm still good. Just barely. I'll be fine. I got Place out. Let's take a look at our upgrades, see if there's anything useful yeah. for us here. Alright, so we're level two. Level two. So I'm gonna get Bull Rush, definitely. We still have to update all the names for at least a bit. Uh, knock down any nearby and charging any enemies nearby, charging forth toward them. Okay. But what I'm really saving up for 
in my offensive category is Blade Storm. So that lets me uh, attack a couple guys in a row, which is awesome. So Burst Chakra, which is an awesome, uh, um, awesome range ability. So um, you know, alter support single player. Multiplayer is always the best way to play. Um, Four, three is great, four is best. We're doing two right now. I think next stream we'll try to get more people in here. In on this, I bought the burst chakra now. I don't have enough renown to get a healing potion, so you should get a healing potion. Okay, nice. Oh, we'll see what I can do here. Yeah. So, support, you want me to be the healer now? Well, I forgot to buy it, so. You? Vile of Copper Weed. That's the best I can do. Okay. Okay, then we got. Uh... So, I'm going to. So, I need to get. I need to get resources out. I just gotta loot out of here. More stuff that'll do, that'll help. Put something to investigate there. Alright. So the Emperor, the Emperor's battle standard from Barodian Wars. Thaddeus Gray captured when he defeated the Barodian host. That's cool. I got some more stuff, but it didn't show up in my inventory. Bug. Bug, bug. Can I make a track room yet? No, what do I need? I think I need... Remnants. So I was able to just unlock my second gear slot, which is going to be really useful for me. Didn't, I didn't have enough for that. I spent everything on some uh, weapons upgrades, and now I don't have enough for uh, to build any chakras yet. There's some weapons. Here we go. So you were saying you needed some healing. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, okay. So if you come back here, I just... Uh, just purchased a bunch of copper weeds, so now I should be able to start uh, healing. Nice. Suspiciously raising it into the air above my head, or I can heal you. Thank you. I think I've got some more here. Um, good. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's do this first. Oh. Do I want to talk to Shazak? Yeah, you do. Sure, let's do it. Hey, name Shazak Varishal. You can call me Sam Thorn. That's my assassin name. Mm -hmm. You're an assassin, aren't you? Either that or you're way too fond of black. Never mind me. I'll be gone before you know it. Well, that's too bad. Yep, I think Shazak likes her. I'm elusive, that's right. Playing hard to get. So we got some. So we found another one of those destiny markers. Uh, somebody's whispering at me. Uh -huh. Is anyone whispering at you? No. Suspicious. Creeping through the back holes. Oh, enemies up ahead. Barracks, okay. So. I, I, it's, it's too far for me to, to be able to get it. Use snipe and then I'll come in. Oh, I got him. Nice. Right in his cell sword face. It was good. Okay. I mean, other guys haven't seen us yet. Uh, the secret thought. The Guild Lord's power. I've never seen anything like it. Where does he uh, draw it from, I wonder? We're referring to the... We gotta balance this combat, so we attack that guy. The other guys will see us. So that's a little bit, too, a little bit suspicious. Oh, too late. We moved too close. He saw me. Yeah, because those guys were engaged to me, but I couldn't actually. Yeah. 
Characters that we have in our game, we uh, love all of them equally, and we think people will love them as well. They fit all the kind of major, major genre requirements for the game. Like we have, um, we do have some plans for additional characters in the future. Uh, in, in, in future episodes, uh, that would that would be available for players to play. No, no, exactly. Yeah, but um, we're really excited about that opportunity. Um, but right, right now, the five characters, characters that we have are they're very specific characters. characters. He's got really interesting, um, rich backstories, and you'll learn more about those as you play through the game. Okay, so we we'll we'll never get out of this alive. It's good to see a friendly face. I'm Keeper Harassus. Harassus, okay. Don't mention it. Why do the cell throws capture you? They usually quite happy to slice any crows and looting the dead. They were holding us for ransom. The Cell Sword are rounding up the keepers and murdering the priests. You have to stop them. They've set up camp in the dining hall. The fortress is the same since the guild took over. There's a chill in the air now. We keep hearing ghostly voices. Surely you've heard them as well. I haven't, but maybe you have. Hmm. Yes, yes, I did. I did. I'll admit it. I did hear something. I just thought it was, it was just a wind. Please, hunt down these bandits. Show them no mercy. If you want to get the drop on them, there's a secret entrance through the pantry that leads to the dining hall. Well, that's helpful. Cool. Nice. All right, so, so well, we're now, 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 now. So you get renowned through uh, completing quests and objectives, and now we used to upgrade your power to the place. So, it's got to be talked a bit more about. Yeah, so, um, so, um, so I'm looking, looking at my, my, uh, uh, my ability progression tree here, so you can see I've got my defensive. defensive. Kind of we're all renaming these, so, so which one would you just kind of go to the right? Uh, so, uh, Sound of the Thorn. Uh, uh, 
So I'm on the right here, and uh, you'll notice some, uh, I can see a, a, a tree of abilities. Um, each character has uh, three main disciplines. So these are the, the different focuses of, of a battle prowess that they look at. Um, right now it's just a defensive, but for some fundamental means it's for assassin uh, discipline. So looking at things like, um, for example, like Tavern's is a backstab in the dark as I struck. Um, and I can come off these uh, powers with, with the now. Uh, in these ability trees, you've also got traits that can, uh, can improve your character's uh, proficiency and also uh, increase your uh, skill chances when you're exploring and you find uh, doors that are locked or chests or uh, locked or traps that you might have cover. Uh, skill checks are really, um, the, uh, skills are really good at stopping those things from happening. Uh, and uh, every level you get uh, about four or five different things, options available to you. And that's just my defensive category. I can also switch over to my. Uh, uh, Archer discipline, uh, which gives me access to more stuff, and I still have a, uh, a support category, which is my um, uh, kind of uh, uh, support uh, team player ability. So that's all your, your gear, your gear recipes, uh, things like that. Yeah, I can also go to my operating progression. So as you're playing through the game, you won't, you won't find much in the way of armor or helmets or anything. We figured these characters are already at the heroes, they've already got. The best armor they possibly could be entering the cabins with already. Um, but when you when you find treasure, when you find loot, um, you use those resources to improve the armor your character's already wearing. So I'm looking at my weaponry right now, which for Fasan Thorn is actually their dagger and her bow. So I can actually improve the quality of those weapons as I play uh, by uh, getting access to Godstone, which allows me to perform enchantments, and also by accessing uh, other resources like uh, common resources, precious metals, and, uh, and remnants from the enemies to be killed. Um, and those those functions the same way. This is just powers that you can get throughout through the, uh, through those upgrades and traits as well. Uh, 
I have not thought of weaving elves. There might be a bug. I can't. I can't actually see them. I've had them loaded up, but. Some more, then we can move on just to, uh, maybe to another section. Yeah. This place is a bit boring. All right, we're all uh, as healed up as we can be. You, you wanted to go south, right? All right. We're on the run. Hired by Varandis to retake the fortress. Will you open that door, or do I need to kick it in? <laughs> they um, opened it. We'll Thank have a, a ceiling cast. Thank you. you. Don't have to get All the ceiling. barracks clear. We that ran into that guild lord and barracks. barely made it out alive. Lakes. His sorcery. I, I've never seen anything like it. I just love the threat. And it's just like no words. Just. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a bit better. The door right open. It'll be a bit better when it's done. Still work in progress. Damn you! We fought hard. But we didn't stand a chance. We don't want to stay locked up in here. But that guild lord, he's unstoppable. Keeper Siegel barely survived the guild lord's attack. The priest keeper Murthane root poultice in the kitchen pantry for treating dark magic burns. Would you mind getting some for him? Uh, yeah. We're getting you. Murth's blessing be with you. Cell sword standing in the corner there, but I'm gonna loot. Loot! Hmm. So, uh, as you navigate looking around, you'll notice some things have different icons. This one in particular has a little d20, which indicates it requires a skill check. So, because I was talking about increasing your skills, ah, uh, crap. Oh, what's the, uh, my thief food? The difficulty of this one for me is 5%. 14 thief craft recognizing difficulty. Yeah, it's a very difficult one to succeed. Perhaps, perhaps when we uh, get the poultice, he'll um, give us a key. Yeah. Alright, other questions come in there? Um, no, just one. Uh, is Lane still is expressing a lot of excitement for the game and happens to be is mentioning that they're, they would definitely sign up for beta testing if it was available. Excellent. It's, it's coming soon. We're trying to... We're, so we finished our green light a little while ago. Uh, a couple weeks ago now. Yeah. And so so all the uh, unexciting stuff that happens when you do green light is banking information, making sure our banks can talk to their banks, and once we sell things, we can get paid. So uh, unfortunately, our bank has some weird numbers, and our studio manager says, well, it doesn't work, and we have to do this and this and this, and I don't understand it all. But the long story short is we can't put the game up on Steam, even for um, beta testing, until the bank sorts of stuff out. So, as excited as, a, as I am about banks, we're just waiting on that. And then we should be up, and we want to get this into people's hands fast. What's that? This is the Mirth Vein Root Cultus. It can be used to treat magical burns. So we can bring it back to that guy. Okay. Hoping you enjoyed the story about Banks. And, and hope it made you as excited about Banks as I am. Yeah. Which is to say, not really. No. Every so, three days I ask Luke, the studio manager, so what's going on with Steam, the bank account? And he says, Arr, gar, And part of the uh, part of the process of going through Greenlight, once they've accepted you, is they, uh, they give you access to all the kind of goodies that uh, allow us to start kind of making a game and, and putting it up on Steam for people to test. And uh, to answer your question a little bit more succinctly, our next goal is to uh, to hopefully get something up on Steam that uh, we can start sharing with some um, relative public for, for uh, public testing. Thank you so much. By the way, the cell soul we've captured has come around. I bet he'll answer your questions if you ask nicely. I'll ask nicely. Talk to him. Talk to him with a sword in the face. Or just use your words. <laughs> that guild lord you're working for. Tell me his name. Ask guild lord Davian. You can kill him for all I care. 
He's an evil bastard. Uh, twisted magic of his. It, it's not natural. Now we know his name. Any Thank idea you. what Guild Lord Davian is doing here? Surely he's not just sightseeing. I have no idea. Look, I'm just a hired sword, okay? Uh, do, do you think they tell us anything? Why did the guild invade the fortress? What do they hope to accomplish? We have to hold the fortress for three days, and then get the hells out. That's all the time the guild lord and the blood god need to, uh... To, to do whatever it is they need to do below the fortress. Whoa! Alright, now we kind of know their plan. Do you know anything about getting the portal obstinate open again? Oh, I, I don't know anything about that. I, I didn't even know it could close, I swear! And finally, I can leave them alone. Should I let him live or kill him? Well, you probably got some questions for him. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to him. Anyone else want to go with this guy? So I'm gonna whisper to him about what I'm after. And I've got nothing more to say. Succeed that one. No, you, you. I know the secret about it. You, you need a key. Oh, there is a key. Yeah, but you get it later. You don't get it now. Oh, okay. I should probably do a little. Have a little dialogue pop up that says you're gonna need a key for this. No, it's fine. It's even, nice. though, even on the team, we try and we try and we try. And like, how do I get in? Oh, I can. I can but, see. I've only got a five percent chance yeah. of succeeding. I thought, well, I can keep trying. Because there's a, there's a reason for it to be there. I just haven't explained it very well. Level design. So uh, right now, so I'm doing a lot of the level design now. I'm project director, but. Everyone pitches in to all sorts of stuff. I'm doing kind of the level design, polishing, you know. Actually, why don't we leave the gameplay there and we'll just talk a little bit about where we're at in the project now. Yeah, that sounds good. We're going to do a lot of walking now. A lot of story finding, so. Story what? And the next four parts are all kind of story bits, so. Yeah, those big combat's coming up. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, right, that big one. Well, I'll, the big one we'll show a lot you. Of big we only got two of the blood guards. There's five more. Um, yeah, so, uh, where are we at? So we're in the last... I like to say the last like four to eight weeks until I think we're, we can get something like out that people can really play play on mass. We're trying to get our, we want to get our first episode out. Um, this we want to get our uh, first three episodes out this summer. Definitely we'll get the first episode out in the next little while. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just in deep in bug fix and polish. We, all of our levels are there. Um, they're working to different levels. Different degrees. We're just getting a lot of people playing, getting a lot of balancing going. Um, Scott, I know you're working on a big new balance pass with a lot of abilities right now. Yeah. So that, up. so that whole tree that I was showing you earlier, that's um, I'm I'm going through and I'm making sure that that is as balanced and as as nice as possible. You'll see everything will be kind of more character specific. It'll be great. So yeah, we're doing a lot of we we have been doing a lot of play tests with people in like just people coming in off the street in Vancouver, not quite off the street. Because we live in, uh, uh, the studio is kind of East Hastings, and there's a lot of really sketchy people just right off the street. Yeah. Who will walk away, not with, not walk away problem, with their phones. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. And so every day, just bugs, 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 bugs. There's a couple big, big systems that are still um, getting some love, so not no, nothing sexy. Our reconnect system is getting some big love. It used to, we went from eight minutes to reconnect to less than half a second. It's like, if your phone drops, so. I don't know, you lose you lose your battery on your phone. You got to jump up. You got to plug it in. Um, it'll it'll reconnect in like half a easy. And a few weeks ago it was eight minutes, and that's not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure the same stuff all works right, and just tons of polish. So then we just want to get it out of people's hands and start to really seeing how it feels. A lot of people play it, how it uh, how it works, and start balancing and polishing even more for that. And then in our next episodes. Just kind of respond to what works and what doesn't, but right now just pushing to get it out. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Right. Just get it done. That, that's uh, that's uh, uh, obviously um, I think art art's kind of coming together over the next couple of weeks. You guys are probably going to start to see a lot more art flooding out. But Wes is going to be putting up a lot more uh, stuff on our uh, Facebook and Twitter posts. Yeah, I would say. Super oh yeah, you said you had some new screenshots. I haven't yeah. seen those yet. Yeah, and there's um, always stuff happening. Like see this this big smudge. I'm going to call out Jason. Uh, our level <laughs> artists. He removed a carpet, but the shadow is still there. So there were things like that. It's not things aren't always easy. So you know, you got 
but, but it's so. it's coming together, and you, you guys are going to start to see a lot more cool stuff over the next few weeks, I think. Yeah, and then so next week we'll be at E3 at the mixed event. So I believe it's a, I believe it's a press event. I mean, E3 is mostly um, a press media event, but we'll be there. We'll be posting online where we're at, what's going on. Hopefully, people come and take a look and play. We'll be hands on. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what we show. Um, back at EA, we would spend months and months and disrupt the whole team to ruin their lives to make E3 demos, and I did that so many times. We're so tired of so that. Bad. So, yeah. so the game is pretty solid. We can take like any slice out. It took us to show this, just to show that. It's pretty easy to put stuff together. We're all about showing actual real gameplay, showing the real game, not doing a dog and pony show that doesn't actually represent the game itself. Yeah. That said, if you're if you're listening to this channel and you are going to be at E3, uh, make sure to reach out to us and let us know so maybe we can come by. Yeah, I can talk to someone. Okay. So we had a couple questions come up. Over yeah. the All right, good, 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 good. So questions. one of them was um, asking whether the, whether or not there's going to be a map. A map. A mini map. A mini map. Um, so we early on we looked at doing a map. It's at least the way we're building the game is pretty. It was pretty complicated to do. What we do is uh, we have compass things to help you direct uh, where you're going. We we name and label spaces and rooms, and we think that's that's kind of alleviates the need for a map. If we need one, like if if we get deep in and we realize, okay, we really really need a, room, try, uh, a map, we'll try to figure that out. But we don't have a map now. Um, we haven't felt we needed it playing, so we'll see. Um, also, uh, because you know we've kind of. Um, based a lot of the mechanics of our game on traditional pen and paper, you can you can draw your own map. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we don't want we don't want to, we don't want levels to be so confusing you have to do that. I know they're pretty playing, easy. I don't feel like a map is nearly as necessary as it is in a lot of games. Yeah. So, but we'll see. If if it happens that it is, we'll look at that. So another one was uh, whether the game was gonna be completely linear. Like as it's just a series of levels or whether there's actually going to be open world exploration. So for our first our first a big story, episode uh, one through nine. It's a linear series of levels, so each episode has a series of levels in them. Some levels are quite linear, some, like our first level, it's kind of a tutorial level, teaching you how to get into the game, get into the yeah. world. It's somewhat linear because we're doing a lot of teaching. Some levels later on are quite open, you can tackle things in any order you want. Um, a big open world game is beyond what we can do right now. Love to do something like that. Yeah, so maybe, maybe, yeah. We always say, Beyond Alter 2 will have this and that. Right now, Beyond Alter 2 is turning into a really big game. Yeah, it is. But, all the things we need to have. Yeah. Yeah, so, so to, uh, to turn this out a little bit more, Eon, like Eon Alter is, uh, is, a, is a fictional place deep within the, the caverns underneath the city. And, uh, and our characters are in those caves trying to reach it. And that's where our, kind of where our story starts. So uh, there's not really a lot of open world, uh, above ground stuff that takes place outside of the very first level. Um, but, uh, as I just alluded to, you know, in the future, get the opportunity to make Eon 2, definitely want to explore more of our world, because uh, if you'll ever see, we, we, there's an atlas, I think, that's publicly available showing off oh, the, yeah, uh, world atlas. The, uh, the continent that these characters are on. It's enormous, and uh, we've spent a long time, 15 years now, um, working on the backstory and, the, uh, and filling in all the details of this world. So at some point, we'd really like to be able to show these off to everyone else. Um. So, a uh, gentleman popped in just now. Um, as for us working with the main game, have you guys ever had creative differences, as in one person wants it this way, but the other guy wants it another way? It happens all the time. Yeah, it does. It happens all the time. But, uh, so Scott and I, well, we started hanging out in high school, mm -hmm. and I think we, we were kind of collaborative and stuff, like we were in band together with some drama, so there's friendship and collaboration back then. You, Joey, and Luke were working really heavily on the whole, uh, the whole original RPG um, world of this. There's a lot of collaboration there. And then we started working at EA together. And I don't know. I was I wasn't your boss, but I was kind of running a lot of a lot of what we we're doing. Yeah. Um how was that? How was I was I okay to work with there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the interesting thing about our studio is that uh, is that everybody kinda have has a thing that they're extremely passionate about. Yeah. And and we've all kind of learned, you know, if, if uh, if Ed, if Ed starts asking questions or wants to change things about our story, for example, is specifically about character information or about uh, uh, places and names and things, uh, he has to kind of go through Luke and I because we're both very, very passionate about the details. 
um, in the next, I think probably about a, a month, maybe a little over a month, we're going to have some information up in a public wiki that you guys can start perusing and adding to. Um, and a lot of that stuff is going to come out of um, uh, the, the lore that, that goes into the game. Ed's, Ed's not going to challenge me too much on, uh, on, on the little details, but I'll, of course yeah. we're always willing to listen to each other if they're good ideas. Yeah. So for a story, for example, so Luke from the, the world comes from Luke and Scott, and the storytelling in-game is myself and our writer Dan Roy. And Dan and I used to work together at Bioware, so we, have, we know a lot of ways that we like to tell stories and things that we know work and don't work based on our experience. So I might say, you know what, I love this plot point, I love this thing in the IP, but for storytelling, for this moment, for these characters, it doesn't really work, or mm -hmm. it's too complicated. Like, for example, we want to we want to have a moment about this this like soulless invasion of Silent Thorn's homeland, and I and I'm mentioning in this story, she's mentioning the, the land that is happening in, because we've heard that before. And then Luke says, no, 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 it's this one specific city here, and these three provinces over here, and then this peninsula down here, and like, well, that's great, and I love for it to be accurate. But I'm not going to have a paragraph about yeah. about this political history when we're just trying to mention about you know how bad it is at, at Silent Thorn's home. So there's always little things like that yeah. that are fun. But as far as working together, yeah, um, Scott's job is to always push to make sure the game is as good as possible. My job is always to make sure the game can get out and is completed on somewhat on schedule, somewhat on on, on budget, but. We both overlap, but at the end of the day, we're pushing for these two areas that are, are distinct but very complementary, um, and we just we work through things. Yeah, we're everyone will always have different opinions about stuff, but when we started, we spent like a good year talking about what the game would be like, and now Scott is attacking it on his side. I'm attacking it on my side, and Scott might make a decision that's slightly different than what I would have made, but it's still the right decision. Mm -hmm. There's so many different right decisions. It doesn't have to be my version of that right decision. It's still right, and we spend so much time together that we just trust each other's um, yeah. decisions. Yeah, I, I think I think it, it definitely comes down to the amount of time that we've spent working with each other. Um, but obviously, conflicts they, they come up, and then the next day we forget about them. And then we forget about them. Yeah. I can't even remember our last one. I know I was angry about something. But I have no idea why. <laughs> um, so we got another question for the best slash weirdest bug found during development. Oh man. Okay. I was wondering if that was going to come up. Um, there's a lot of weird ones. So, well, oh, I know one. I don't know if you can stream it. You can link to it. Um, the, uh, the chicken dog. Or the yeah, dancing the dog. dog. So the chicken yeah. dog was fun. Okay, here's a bug. This was incredible pain in the ass. This was during our vertical slice, like two years ago. We were, um, this was the earlier version of the game. Kind of a, not a different engine, but a different code base. There was a bug where every now and then, Silent Thorn would spawn in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You didn't know why, you couldn't play her. Everything got locked up, only with her. Yeah. And we were looking at it for so long, trying to figure out what was going on. And what it turned out was, when, when we were building our lore tables, all the like, lore articles, things you can read about the character in the world, um, if you added an extra space to the end of a line, yeah. do you remember this? I do, yeah. yeah. If you added a space to the end of, end of a line, it would break how that was being compiled, and then when that got added to her character, her character would have some broken, something broken about her, and she wouldn't be able to actually connect to the spawn point properly. So, I don't know how somebody found it, I think Leah, our former lead programmer, found it, I think, but it was, uh, it was literally an invisible, you had an invisible character in a document that was ingested into the game, like yeah. an XML just, or something. Just, just broke the whole compile that process. That broke so. the whole compile process, yeah. and it was the most bizarre, weird thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of weird bugs. A lot of weird stuff happens all the time. But. I think my favorite one was still um, trying to have a conversation with a dog and getting flung into space. Oh yeah, oh, so yeah. You, you tried to talk to a dog. I don't even know why you try to talk to dogs. But, <laughs> but uh, and then you, would go, you got teleported into like a tiny island in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, some stairs that we had left floating in the middle of nowhere. So, that's pretty cool. I know we, we fixed it so there isn't floating stairs in the middle of nowhere, but we still don't know why that teleported you there. I think one of my favorites <laughs> related was also, um, we, were, um, we were working on, there's a cart, uh, like a, a cart that's uh, blocking a bridge in the first level. And uh, I was working on the physics for it so that when the when you destroy it or when it gets exploded, uh, the bits and pieces are able to fly off and leave a leave a clear path. 
but uh, for some reason it was affecting your characters, so when you would use it, it would actually cause the characters to fly off into space, and they just go off infinitely. So that was that was pretty fun to watch. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah. <laughs> was Daniel's homebrew ever the cause of any wild parties at the studio? Um, who's asking this? <laughs> this, is, this is God Sin 1. God Sin 1. <laughs> Daniel's so something that was Daniel. I, I, I want to know who this is. <laughs> okay, um, Daniel's homebrew... Shlebovitz. Shlebovitz. It, it definitely it definitely had a big impact on one of my recent birthday parties. <laughs> uh, we were at Jaeger's in downtown Vancouver, and then um, and then Shlebovitz came out, and then there's a party bus that nobody knows where that came from. Disappeared. And then there's all sorts of shenanigans, and then like everyone was just destroyed. I, this was right before we started production. We started the game, so this was. So it didn't affect the game itself, but no, that would have been losing track of what was happening when. I have no idea when this was. And apparently, she it impacts your memory. It does. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's a thing. So yeah, so <laughs> Croatian yeah, moonshine. Yeah, Croatian moonshine. So the new one, the new one that's kind of reckoned reckon shit up these days is Mexican uh, mezcal. So for those who don't know mezcal, it is it's from the it's agave plant. It's the same origin as tequila, but it's really refined. It's really fantastic. You can sip it. You you eat it with orange um, and um, rocks, some sort of rock salt. Um, but the kind of, so our writer brought it up from Mexico. He's been living in Mexico for a little while. So he brought that up. The salt is actually, um, it actually has ground worm, ground worm in it. Delicious. And it actually is delicious. <laughs> um, so that's been the cause of a lot of problems lately. Yeah. Um, we come from the we come from the legacy of like Electronic Arts Black Box, which was probably the most alcoholic studio. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Everyone had like a bar behind their desk. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, that's rough. Beer and cake Fridays. Black there, Box. I would say uh, the, places like that it was a little bit more of a necessity, like a, a, a way of living. Just the, the only way the only way to cope with yeah. Electronic Arts was to drink through it. And yeah. Unfortunately, that yeah, it's just kind of become a hobby I, here. I had a good time. Yeah. I don't think people need to drink to. I don't think people have anything they need to drink through. I mean, some people on the team might disagree, but <laughs> I hope they tell me instead of just drink their sorrows only. Because I want to make their life better if I can. Yeah. Um, cool. So we're gonna uh, gonna do another one of these soon. Um, but anyone who's watching should uh, type in and tell us what kind of stuff you want to see next. Um, what do you want to see next? If there's other, uh, we'll try to get some more people on the team and drag some of the artists, some other people in to talk and yeah, show we get what they're doing. One. We're also not going to just do gameplay every time. We can, we might uh, uh, talk about design. Might even like point, point Twitch at some of the artists at work, and, and sometime, sometime next week we might do that. I'll also be reporting in from E3, talking about what's going on there, what I see there. Um, yeah. Cool. I don't know who God Sim was, but they want to see Scott Slack like that. I, this, this is, is this Jason? I don't, uh, don't know who it is. We need to find out who this is. So it's, we can just probably make a lap in the office as soon as we're out of here. Yeah, somebody needs, somebody's getting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well, um, maybe next time. Next time. Cool. Next time we'll, we'll go slap Dan. Yeah. We'll as always. Slap Dan? Thanks for, I'll go slap Dan. Okay. Yeah, go, um, uh, go check us out on Facebook. Check out our website, eonalter.com. Big update on the website coming up. Wes is working on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and until next time, thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.